The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on our call today. My name is Christina Spearman from TransCat, and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. Our webinar topic today is Introduction to Portable Precision Power Analyzers. This topic is being presented by Jason Axelson from Fluke. Jason has been with Fluke for over 15 years as a field support engineer with the North American Technical Support Team. Recently, he was made product application specialist and subject matter expert for power quality, scope meters, and battery testers, and is dedicated to product and solutions applications training. He also applies his expertise helping customers and team members with diagnosis and resolution of both technical and product inquiries, and speaks with end user customers to gather information toward developing new product solutions through their insight and needs. We expect today's presentation to last roughly 40 minutes, and then we'll answer any questions that have been submitted. During any time during the presentation, you can send questions through the question box to the right in your webinar controls. I also want to mention this webinar is being recorded. Each of you will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recorded webinar and the slides of today's presentation. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jason. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Christina. And, um, yeah, I appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, we're going to kind of go with a little overview of the Norma 6000. Um, so the initial slide here just kind of gives us there's um, a couple different variants of the Norma that we have. Um, there's a four channel and a three channel version. So the uh, four channel version just, you know, again, if you're doing like, you know, neutral measurements, adding in a neutral and you're not just doing delta configurations, you have the additional channel for a neutral added in here. Um, but you can certainly do single phase measurements as well as three phase measurements with either tool. Um, and then we have a plus variant in the picture here. Um, the plus model actually allows you to also incorporate a speed and torque sensor if you're doing motor testing and making motor measurements. Um, so we'll just kind of go over an overview here of the uh, Norma. So what is the Norma? So um, Luke has made some Norma power analyzers over the years, um, which are bench products. Um, so the Norma itself is a portable precision analyzer. So it can be used for bench use, but it's also designed for portability. And we haven't really had an, a solution there. You could certainly use the bench normas for this, but they'd be very difficult to get in the spaces. And they also require an external power supply. Um, the Norma, just like its predecessors, the Norma 6000 does not, it's not a power quality analyzer. So, um, those of you who have experience using maybe like the Fluke 430 series or the Fluke 1730 series, where you install a unit and let it log and record parameters like dips and swells and sags um, for the utility power, it does not do that. So you can definitely make measurements on the utility, of course, volts, amps, and power measurements and harmonics, but it doesn't, it's not set up to do event capture. So you don't have that capability and it's not designed for long-term logging like a regular power analyzer would be. Um, the thing that separates the Norma out primarily is going to be its higher bandwidth capacity as well as the capability to do DC measurements. So um, Fluke in general, all of our power quality analyzers are based on power standards for utilities at 50 or 60 Hertz or 400 Hertz, depending upon the model. But the advent of the Norma allows you to measure frequencies up to 500 kilohertz, so much higher frequency ranges than normal utility power. Um, so again, AC, DC voltage, of course, current and power and harmonics, those parameters are all measured by the Norma. Um, AC and DC measurements, so <clears throat> over the years, um, as we've made a transition into more renewable energy resources, wind power and solar power, DC is becoming more of a major aspect of measurements on a day-to-day -day maintenance routine. Or if you're just doing efficiency measurements, solar measurements, and the Norma has the ability to do AC to DC and DC and AC systems. Um, the accuracy of the Norma is 0.1%, so it'd be kind of on par with um, the uh, class A analyzer. It doesn't have class A specifications, 
because the class A has a lot to do with the quality of measurement. So there's other parameters that need to be measured for class A, but it does have the higher current and voltage accuracy. Um, so the difference again is um, the, if, if you're familiar with the previous Norma series, which is a bench product, the uh, previous Norma series required external power supplies. They're really more for bench use in a laboratory. They can't really be taken into a field. Um, the 6000 actually is lighter weight, um, portable, battery powered, so you can carry it into a field, you know, and do work remotely. Or also, uh, we'll go into that in a little more detail here. Um, so the the issue um, over the years also is, is that we've had a lot of customers being involved with more alternative energy measurements, variable speed drive measurements, and dealing with much higher frequencies than utility power. So that really requires a different type of tool to make those measurements. And that's where the Norma comes in. So the Norma has the ability to make these higher frequency range measurements like variable speed drives and power conversion systems that the uh, previous power quality analyzer wasn't designed to make. The kind of, to give you an overall system breakdown of where different types of tools would be used, <clears throat> I have a diagram up here so kind of shows you a little diagram of, you know, power distribution and then where the norm would fit in. So norm would fit in again, um, usually when you're making alternative energy measurements. So solar, wind farms, any type of power conversion systems or inverters, um, solar inverters, that's where the norm of 6000 would be used. Um, you know, usually it's going to be used by OEMs, so manufacturers, um, operators or owners um, and then you know you can use it to test the efficiency of a power conversion system so it also has the ability to do efficiency calculations on both ac and dc and ac and dc systems both the pq analyzer is really designed for once the power conversion process is complete and you're looking at ac power only for 50 and 60 hertz power distribution then a power quality analyzer will be used to connect up and see what kind of power is coming in from the utility or other on-site power measurements. And that's what the difference is, or the location kind of gives you a visual difference or an idea of the difference on where the locations of measurement would be taken at. Um, so the key attributes of the Norma, so really, <clears throat> I mean, the large bright, bright display, so it does have a larger resource, the larger display than a lot of our other products do. But it's um, the key is, is it's compact, so you can carry it around with you. Um, battery power, so up to 10 hours of battery power would be what you get on a normal charge, um, and that's designed for you know again field use, so either in facility or outside a facility. The unit's IP50 rated, so it's not entirely waterproof, but it's dust resistant, so you can use it in dirty environments, but not entirely waterproof. Um, the keypad interface has been simplified. So we have hot keys that you can just push to immediately go to functions on the keypad, whereas most of the bench analyzers require a series of programming steps to get the keys set up correctly. So really just clean names like trend and scope are available. So with just a simple push of the button, you can go right to your parameters. Um, <clears throat> the other thing about the Norma is, is that um, you have regular clamp inputs, so you don't need specialized shunts. So it just uses regular BNC connections like our Fluke 430 series would as an example. So you can use Fluke clamps or you can use um, clamps from other manufacturers because you can custom scale them in the setup for the Norma series. So again, Fluke clamps would be acceptable with BNC connections. Those are all gonna have the voltage outputs. Um, the voltage and current harmonics and power harmonics can be measured up to a hundredth order. Um, typically for most, doesn't quite get you into the upper range of the super harmonics entirely, but it does put you up there quite a bit. Um, gives you an FFT display um, that you can see right on the unit, so live waveform information as well. And you also can adjust, um, you can log data into the meter's memory, so you can log nominal, min, max, and average measurements. Um, but it doesn't have event triggering, so you can't scale it to capture events again like a power quality analyzer. 
um, our typical category safety ratings. So safety use in electrical environments for service entrance were category four, 600 rated and can make voltage measurements again up to a thousand volts. Um, and then does come with PC application software. Um, if you're used to using like some of our other software like Energy Analyzer Power Log or Power Analyze, it is a different software for the Norma specifically, um, but has similar functionality and capabilities. The issue um, or the key attributes um, would be which we went over briefly would be power distribution, like power quality analyzers, again, are designed for utility distribution. So 50 and 60 Hertz for power. The Norma, again, separates itself out in that it supports higher frequency ranges. And again, that would be, you know, inverters, variable frequency drives, and power conversion systems like solar inverters. Um, the tool can measure efficiency of those, but also make measurements, you know, voltage, AC, DC, power, those things can all be measured on these higher frequency systems, which we haven't had previously except in our bench Norma products. Um, some sample screens here taken. So just like a lot of our fluke power quality analyzers, um, similar graphic screen configurations. So decent graphics resolution, color display screens. Um, the screens can display multiple parameters and you can page through those and you can build customized lists of what parameters you want to see visibly because maybe you only care about voltage. You can certainly set the meter up to where it just shows you voltage on the display screen. So making it quite simple. Um, so kind of a little bit of an overview about what the Norma's purpose is and what its advantages are. Um, some, basically a little bit about what the Norma configuration looks like. So here you have an example of um, the input connections on two different variations. So we have the 6003 version, which is three channel, and then we have the 6004 plus. The plus model is noted here really adds the mechanical interface. So you can hook up speed and torque sensors directly into the meter and measure motor efficiency directly. Those connections um, are made by a connector off to the side of the meter there. So if you order the plus version, you have your input connections for your sensors for torque and speed are provided built into the unit. And it comes with an adapter, um, basically like a little um, adapter that snaps in there with screw terminal connections, making it pretty easy to use. Um, also the unit has, um, not only can you use the external current clamps, but it does have a, a shunt built into it like the bench Norma versions do to give you higher accuracy current measurements and smaller currents. And so simply there's a switch that slides back and forth and we'll take a closer look at that, but it exposes the blue connection leads, which are your shunt inputs. And those are built directly in, it's a 10 amp shunt built directly into the Norma itself. And it doesn't matter which model they all have it. Um, some key attributes. <clears throat> so what I was talking about here was, is there's just a simple slide up and down to reveal the BNC connection for the current clamps, as well as expose the shunt. So it just depends on what you want to use. And the unit comes with um, a, your set of voltage leads, you know, banana lead connections come with it standard for both your voltage and your current shunt inputs. Um, as a separate accessory, um, you can use other fluke labeled clamps. And then we also make a higher accuracy AC-DC current clamp with a larger jaw dimension that can be used with it for like solar systems or where you have larger conductor sizes. Um, the accessories. So again, just mentioning we have a 2000 amp AC-DC clamp, which is the ADI-210S here pictured. And that has, again, supports conductors up to two inches in diameter. And then it also has an optional um, shunt, or a, not a shunt, but a um, differential probe. So for customers who are doing solar arrangements where they may be ex, you know, looking at voltages up to 1500 volts, then there's a separate um, differential probe that can be used with the meter for 1500 volt DC measurements, if that's something that's necessary. Um, <clears throat> have we had any questions, Christina, come in? Anybody have any questions before I continue on here? Nope, no Doesn't questions. It look like no I see anything in the chat. So, okay, no problem. So we'll just continue on here. Don't we just want to keep rambling on. Um, so 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, kind of the use cases for it. <clears throat> so we've already kind of touched base on these a little bit, but um, one of the use cases would be renewable energy. So renewable energy measurements, you're going to be dealing with power conversion systems, which a normal power analyzer won't measure because it's going to be limited to utility frequencies only. So that's where the Norma 6000 can make measurements at. Um, and the end users here would be, you know, people who are work, you know, solar and wind farms, um, maintenance contractors, suppliers of frequency conversion systems, and transducer suppliers and manufacturers. Um, electric vehicles. So again, electric vehicles deal a lot with um, power conversion systems. So inverters, motor efficiency testing. Um, so again, this can be done on the bench level using a Norma 6000 or in the field also. Um, the advantage of using it in the field application is, is that you're going to be able to get real world measurements and efficiencies for your products. Um, yeah, so someone had asked what the part number is for the module to be the U, U1500S. So U1500S <clears throat> would be the would be the part number for the, the probe there. Um, the R&D applications. So the normal the typical Norma series was designed around bench applications. So high efficiency energy circuits, um, transformer manufacturing. So now the Norma 6000 adds that capability in a portable format. So you can certainly use it for research and development as well as making efficiency measurements on transformers even. Uh, manufacturing. So again, um, if you're a manufacturer of frequency conversion systems and transformers and efficiency systems, motors, the Norma 6000 can be used for testing and verifying the performance. Um, you know, that's the, maybe the guaranteed specification or, you know, design performance of the product. You can use the Norma as a verification tool. Um, basically, um, we talk about personas, essentially people who would normally use it and who they are. Um, technicians. Um, so a lot of times you're just doing the standard of work. You have a workflow that you're working off of and you're just taking measurements, um, just following the workflow. Um, so essentially having a tool that doesn't have a lot of complex connections, easy to navigate, easy to set up and easy to use um, with a minimal amount of connections going into the unit. Um, so the Norma, we've tried to make it much more simplified than having to use a, a more complex bench tool. Back here. Um, <clears throat> so, kind of the what we call pain points. So, we all have pain points and things that we just hate to do or don't like about doing in certain jobs um, or troubles we're running into. With um, the Norma, essentially the typical workflow process, we've tried to make the Norma improve that process. So essentially carrying a power analyzer into the field, of course, <clears throat> if, especially if you're using a high frequency, something for power conversion systems, you want something you can carry. Um, the original Norma series <clears throat> is, there's a picture of it here, um, very bench-like bench, bench -like unit. So not something that's very easy to carry in the field at all. And it has an open case format. So, you know, not IP rated at all. So not something that can handle dusty environments. But the Norma 6000 allows you to get into these tighter spaces where you can carry something with you. Um, again, the bench models, a lot of times you're dealing with complex shunts. So complex current shunts there. And so what happens is, is that um, the wiring becomes complex. Um, so we've tried to simplify the interface on the Norma to make it quite usable with just your standard, um, you know, current clamps, flute current clamps, or even other customers. Again, um, you can use different manufactured clamps if you want to. Again, custom scaling is supported. Um, again, <clears throat> wiring connections. So just complex wiring. Again, clamp connections, trying to simplify the process. Um, Plug-in power. So the bench models don't have external, you know, there's no battery packs or something you'd use with them. They're they're really all 120 volt power. So the adding the actual capability of the um, 
battery pack for up to 10 hours of life allows you to get all the use you need in the field and you can easily you know get the job done within a 10 hour time frame it's quite a lengthy time frame on the battery but you don't need to worry about cords and having to hang cords around um, narrow spaces so the normal allows you to fit into very small spaces and kind of tight spaces where you have to squeeze in and then also um, read and record the you know data so bright visual displays on the unit for just reading up live data and then software that you can interface with that you can use for remote con you know configuring the unit if you wanted to if you don't want to even do the touchscreen interface you can do it through the software but the software also is accessible to you to allow you to grab your data and build reports and export information um, the who uses the norma 6000 so it's a pretty broad use case. Um, definitely light laboratory work. So if sometimes um, the bench Norma, like the Norma 5000 is a good product if you're looking at using it for very low, low range current applications. So, you know, it could be very, very low energy circuits. Um, and they may require a bench version, but certainly you can use the Norma 6000 for laboratory applications. Um, so, you know, verifying designs and testing out designs on a lab, on a bench. Um, the, of course, the main point of it would be is that you can make the transition to field use. So you don't need to, you know, try to worry about how am I going to wheel this thing in a cart in the field and use it, which isn't really practical, especially if you're climbing on things like ladders. But the Norma 6000 allows you that capability. Um, the support again for four, for up to a thousand volts just like our typical fluke power analyzers but if you are involved in medium to high voltage systems like our other fluke products you can set in custom ratios for scaling you know using cts and pts so secondaries if you wanted to for to meet the that kind of requirement um, but again anybody can really use it um, laboratories um, but the big thing is is service service and operations and field work. So proofing out, you know, installed or, you know, lab applications generally allow you to test things, um, not in a real world application, but the Norma would allow you to move your application into the real world and make these measurements and see how things operate under a real load, you know, real load conditions. Um, so the model variants, <clears throat> kind of discussed this already, but basically you have the plus and the non-plus versions. So pretty simple numbering scheme, the three for three channel, four for four channel, and then the plus. So one of the things you can do um, with the Norma is you can connect them back to back up to two Normas. So if you needed like eight channels, um, and one reason might be efficiency measurements on a circuit that's you know three phase in or three phase out, this is an example. It doesn't need to be that to be the case because the channels can be custom configured, but you can have up to eight channels for one Norma by connecting two back to back. So you just cable them together and then you have essentially eight channels or six channels accessible if you wanted. Um, so uh, one of the reasons why that would be um, useful would be is like transformer manufacturers. So if you want to test the efficiency of your transformer design, you can measure input and output on a transformer with up to eight channels using two normas. Um, again, this just kind of goes over our basic specifications here, but you know, has the ability to trend data, has the typical scope screen, the category ratings, um, IP rating, um, you know, internal battery pack. <clears throat> so it has all these things. And then we mentioned the master slave configuration here, which is really just has to do with you being able to stick two of them together. So if you want again up to six or eight channels, you can connect them and then then you'll have access to six and eight channels instead of just three or four. So that also has that capability, which is a little unique. Um, so yeah, looks like I need to adjust some spelling here. So um, basically the more of a recap here, I guess <clears throat> we'd be kind of just going back through what we've already been touch base in, you know, touching base on, but portability. So really designed for field applications. I mean, that's really the the most important part here. Um, portability, of course, is lightweight. 
the UI is easy to navigate and use. You don't have to be a necessarily a you know a design engineer on a bench where you're working with lab, you know, designing circuits in a laboratory environment. Um, accessory support. So we have large conductor support, plus you can use any range of fluke current clamps with BNC connections. So all of our S labeled clamps would work. Um, multiple instrument synchronization, which I was mentioning. So for doing efficiency measurements up to eight channels, um, 500 kilohertz bandwidth you know, capacity, as well as the ability to use an oscilloscope function. So again, inverters and variable speed drives can be measured where we couldn't do that with a typical utility tool like a power quality analyzer for 50 and 60 hertz. Um, so renewable energy, electric vehicles, manufacturing, research and development, and service and third-party laboratories would all be appropriate use, you know, use environments for this tool. Um, product comparisons. So Fluke, of course, manufactures quite a broad range of products. Um, for those, we've had the 430 series in production in the scopes for years. Um, but basically, this kind of gives you a little bit of a highlight of what the difference between them is. Like one of them is, is the Norma 6000 and the Plus versions. They support motor torque and speed measurements. And really, you know, we do have that capability in some of our other tools, which would be the other Norma bench models. And then the 438, if you're familiar, which is also a portable tool, actually. Um, and the other differences is really going to be is, is that the accuracy specifications. So you'll see when you get into the Norma 5000, if you need some really high accuracy, low current bench applications at a very high frequency range, then the Norma's 4 and 5000 have the capability to go to even, you know, even a higher range. And then, of course, our scope products support a higher range, um, just not the accuracy for measurement. Um, so quite a variable product line. Um, but again, where the Norma excels is, is when you're doing power quality, or I shouldn't say power quality, but when you're doing power measurements on frequency and inversion systems, high frequency systems. Um, our scopes, you can do some power quality measurements on high frequency systems. Um, they just don't have the input channels to support you know, a full three phase measurement. Um, and they don't do efficiency calculations and then the accuracy is not really there, but <clears throat> they do have a need because they support higher frequency ranges and pretty much you can measure anything with a scope within its bandwidth capacity. Um, so really just kind of an overall breakdown of those product categories. Um, so Norma has been around for a long time. Um, I mean, I've worked at Fluke, I think I'm actually working towards 17 years. Um, but Norma has been around since I've started working at Fluke, so the Norma 4 and 5000 series. Um, but over the years, because I used to just have tech support for years, one of the things that we, over the years, that's only increased in request is the ability to make measurements on inverters and variable frequency drives. Um, and then, of course, with all the new low energy and efficiency standards that are coming out on the globally these days, uh, being able to check your motor's efficiencies, um, that's becoming a much, much more broader topic, too, of interest for people. So the Norma allows you to make these type of measurements um, and support the higher frequency ranges that the quality analyzers weren't capable of doing. Um, and I think that, uh, I think, yeah, we made it about a little over 40 minutes. So if you have any other questions, we could address those. All right. Uh, thanks, Jason. That concludes our sure. presentation portion of the webinar. And we're going to now move on to the question and answer session. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please send it through the question box in your webinar controls. Uh, let's get to our first question. Um, can the Norma be used in low current DC measurement like LED lighting systems? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. So one of the things that's come up over the years um, for us a lot has also been measuring lighting circuits. So definitely you can use um, the range of current, the internal shunt of the Norma 6000 supports. I mean, it supports up to 10 amps but it also supports lower milliamp measurements using the shunt. So you can definitely use it for low energy LED lighting circuits for measurements. 
All right, the next question. Can the Norma 6000 series be used to capture events like dips and swells? Yeah, so that, um, just to clarify or quantify what we've talked about is, is it, the Norma doesn't support any kind of event triggering um, like you would with a power quality analyzer. So while you can see live waveform information and even capture and store that data, you can't set up any custom triggering to capture events. So that would be limited to our power quality analysis products or our scopes. So if you have high frequency events you wanna capture, specifically of a certain, a certain type, then a fluke oscilloscope would make more sense because you can set up custom triggering for high frequency events. All right. Uh, can you custom scale the input to work with different current clamps? Yeah, so <clears throat> if customers or individuals are familiar with our Fluke 430 series, one of the things that sets it apart is its ability to custom scale. So the Norma 6000 is a lot like that. So if you have a current clamp from a different manufacturer, the key is, is that it, the meter supports a voltage input for current unless you want to run it through a shunt of some kind, but otherwise the current clamp should have a voltage output and you can custom scale it. Okay. Uh, do you have to configure the instrument with the keypad or can you configure the Norma 6000 through the software interface? Yeah, um, over the years, Fluke has allowed what we call remote control functions. So basically allowing you to use the um, software interface to reprogram an instrument. And you can certainly do that with the Norma software. It does allow you to connect to and also reprogram the instruments through the software interface, which um, the keypad's good too. The software interface to me is very quick just because it's kind of all laid out there in one form factor right in front of you. And there really isn't any buttons that you need to finger press, but you could do it both ways. Okay. Um, our solar application is around 1500 volts. Does the Norma 6000 support this level of DC function or DC voltage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with DC voltage measurements, a lot of times with um, solar applications, which is the question about the accessory earlier is, is uh, we do have the differential 1500 volt probe. So you would need the 1500 volt probe to be able to do those 1500 volt uh, DC applications, but we certainly support them. Okay, that um, looks like another one. How many measurement parameters can you view at one time in the active display? Sure, so um, in the active display, again, I mentioned earlier, you can customize what you see. Um, the maximum number of visible parameters at any one time in the display is 20. Um, it could be quite clustered looking at 20 measurements simultaneously, but you can, you can vis visualize up to 20 at one time. And then if you want to see more, you would be paging down, but the one display supports 20 visible measurements. All right, I think that was the last question. Um, so that yeah. concludes our time for today. Uh, sure. Any other questions or would like to find more about TransCat product and service offerings, you can contact us at 800-828-1470 or on the web at transcat.com. Um, I want to thank Jason for his great informative presentation. Um, and sure. that you, um, everyone, you know, got something out of today's presentation and that you continue to join us for future TransCat e-learning webinars. So. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity, uh, Christina. I'm glad everybody who wanted to, you know, everybody showed up. Uh, really appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. Everyone have a great yeah. afternoon. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye, everybody. <laughs>